Hi, in this next few videos we're going to talk about dependencies of classes in C Sharp, and we'll introduce the Unity framework for handling dependency injection. So this is the program that we're going to be building. I'm going to be working with a hero class, and it's going to have some dependencies as you can see in my game. So I have grenades, guns, bullets, and I have swords. All of these things are going to work together to make a demonstration that shows you how dependencies should be handled, and using the Unity system, or the Unity Dependency Manager, in C Sharp. So the first thing I'm going to do is start up Visual Studio and create a new project. So I'm looking for a console application, so I'm going to switch this to console, and I'm going to be working with the .NET Framework. Let's go ahead and choose Next. So I'm going to name my project as Video Game Dependency Injection Demo, and let's click Create. So here we are at the first part of the program. I'm going to first of all create an interface to define what my hero class should look like, and then create an instance of it. I'm going to call this thing iHero, which stands for Interface for the Hero. So when we get to the code here, I'm going to change this to Interface. So I'm going to code in one activity, or one method that my hero can do. Let's call it Attack. So this is such a simple game, I'm going to only do one thing. You could make him do Run, Jump, and Rescue, and all the rest of the things if you wish. But for our purposes, Attack will work. Now let's make an actual hero class. So I'm going to right click and choose Add again, and choose a new class. I'm going to name it hero.cs. So I'm going to make sure that it implements the hero. So let's put in a colon and I hero. So you can see, in order to fulfill the rules of the contract, I must click on I hero and choose implement the interface. And so sure enough, we have the method called attack. Let's give this guy a property. So the only thing we really need for one property here is the person's name. So let's make it a string. And then we'll follow that with a constructor. So I'll have a constructor that expects to have a string for the name. So let's go implement something in the activity called attack. So I'm going to do it wrong the first time to show you how you would not do dependency injection or to handle dependencies, but then I'm going to improve it in a later version of the hero. So first of all, we're going to generate a sword. So I'm going to new up a sword, you might call it, or instantiate a sword. Well, sword doesn't exist yet, so we see some underlying red lines, but we will make one in just a jiffy. So I'm going to have sword give me a property of name just as we did for hero. So this sword is Excalibur. So I want to be able to generate a new class in a separate file. So you can see that the property says uh, over here, we've got a new sword. Just like we did for hero, let's create a property, and I'm going to call mine sword name. It's a string and then we'll make a constructor to go with it. Let's create a method now to make this sword work. I'm going to name this thing attack with me, or attack using me, something like that. And then we're just going to print out a message that says, sword name slices through the air, devastating all enemies. All right, let's go back into our hero now and see if we can fix this guy up. So hero has a sword that was just created out of thin air, just like Excalibur, and now we're going to make him work. So the message that we're going to print now that we're ready to attack is going to say, name prepares himself for battle. And then the second line is going to be sword, and we'll use the attack with me function. Let's now return into program CS, and let's make our new hero. All right, so we'll define a new hero, and we'll call him Ultraman. And then we will make hero one attack something, and then finally the read line will pause the program before it exits. So I run the program and you can see the output now says Ultraman prepares himself for the battle. Excalibur slices through the air, devastating all enemies. So it's a pretty simple program. But now let's talk about maybe some design problems that it has. So let's return to the hero class. And here is the line that is the problem. So the rule for dependency injection is this. You should never create a new object inside a definition or inside the methods of a parent or another object. So we are creating an interdependency of two classes here. So it appears that heroes now cannot exist 
unless they have a sword. So if we were to delete sword from this project, hero fails. So since he is so dependent on a sword, I'm going to name him that. I'm going to say hero that only uses swords. We'll create another version of a hero in just a minute. Now maybe you've guessed that we're going to create another hero that can use multiple weapons. Well, we need more than just a sword for our weapons, so let's create some new weapons. So we're going to generate a new class, or a new interface, and I'm going to call it iWeapon. Inside of iWeapon, we're going to have only one method that we're going to define. And so we'll call it attack with me, since we've already used that once in our sword. So now we have ourselves an interface that can be used for multiple weapons. Let's apply it first to the sword, and then create some new weapons. So I'm going into sword, and I'm going to extend this, or tell it that it implements, I weapon. And, as you can see, attack with me is already here. If I were to delete this method, so I'm just going to cut it out, we should see an error message appear up here. Yes, it says, you must be able to use attack with me if you are an I weapon. So I'm just going to control Z to put the function back in. All right, so we've got sword for an I weapon. What else could we make? So let's create a new weapon, and we'll call him grenade. So grenade is going to implement I weapon just like sword did. So let's give a, a new method to it called attack with me. Let's also put in a property for the weapon name. Then for attack with me, we'll just say console write, and we'll say that the weapon name sizzles for a moment and then explodes into a shower of deadly metal fragments. So now we could have iWeapon implement either a sword or a grenade. Now we're going to make another hero. So we had heroes that use only swords. That was our first problem. Now we're going to fix that with a hero that can use any weapon. Okay, so let's create another class. And for this class, I'm going to call him hero that can use any weapon and we will implement the iHero interface, so colon iHero. Let's give it a property for name, so we'll have a string, and then we'll make a constructor. So the constructor will take the string called name and associate it with a property called capital name. We'll also have to implement the methods in our iHero. And as you recall, attack using, uh, just attack was the, uh, the method name. So for his attack, I'm going to say, name prepares to attack. Then it occurs to me, I don't have a weapon for this hero. So now we're going to have to import one. We're going to have to send it in through a property. So here are some of the features that we're going to have to add. First of all, let's add a new property to our hero. And we will call it my weapon. So he is of type I weapon, which means he can have swords or grenades. Secondly, we're going to have to modify the constructor. So the constructor is now expecting a weapon type, and then we will associate it with his new property called myWeapon. So since this hero has a weapon, we can now call the method attackWithMe, which is associated with his weapon. So myWeapon.attackWithMe. Let's now return to program main, and let's see if we can add a new hero. So I'm going to instantiate hero2. And he is going to be of the type of hero that can use any weapon. And so we'll make a new version of him. And so the name, the, the property called name, we'll call him Super Great Man. And then he has a second parameter, which is either a sword or a grenade, because he can take I weapon as his type. So we're going to take grenade. Now we're going to make hero 2 do an attack and then uh, also add in a right line so that these two are separated. Now it looks like we've got ourselves something working. We have the second item that says Super Great Man appears to attack, and then it says something sizzles for a moment. So it looks like the grenade doesn't have a name. We could probably fix that, but you can see that they are both working now. One only holds swords, the other one can do a sword, or in this case, as we've shown, a grenade. So let's return to the grenade and fix the one problem that's there. Uh, it looks like I have not left a constructor in the code. So let's do a quick uh, insert here. We'll choose a constructor, and we'll have to provide a name for the grenade now. So let's return to the program, and you can see that there is a missing parameter now for the grenade. It needs a name. So I'm going to call my grenade pineapple. 
So now you can see that pineapple shows up as part of the attack mode. And so pineapple explodes. So I want to prove that this hero that can use any weapon can also use a sword. So let's make Hero 3. We'll make his name Sword Swinger. And we'll give him a new sword, and the sword's name is Brissinger. And then we'll make him attack. So you can see that Ultraman is stuck with Excalibur all the time, and Sword Swinger could probably take a grenade, or, as we've seen, he can also use a sword. Now let's take a pause and get the lesson here that we're trying to learn. So this design had a failure in it. The hero that can only use swords was that way because of the way we programmed his class. So his only sword was stuck here because we had damaged the code, you might say. We had violated a principle of creating a new object inside of another. So to fix that, the better design is to have these parameters. So now my weapon can be passed in, and now there is no dependence on the sword in this class. They are more loosely coupled than they used to be. I'm going to create one more weapon that will illustrate a problem with what I'm doing now. So we are going to create a new hero. Let's call him Hero 4. His name is G.I. Joe, and of course, he wants to carry a gun. Well, a gun doesn't exist, so we'll create one now. All right, so we'll generate a new gun. So we'll take the suggestion from the code and we'll create a new gun right here in a new file. So let's take a look at the gun. It needs to have a property. We'll call it name instead of this V that's been provided. And we'll have a public property with a getter and setter. We'll have a string that is the uh, parameter that's going to be his name. And then for the method, we must implement attack with me. And so we'll do a console write that says the gun fires around, and now the victim has a deadly hole in him. Next, I would like to have my gun with another class. Let's call it bullet. And so we're going to have a list of bullets. So this is kind of like an array, but easier to work with. So we need to define what a bullet is, and we need to import the list property. So let's go look at the properties of bullet. Let's give it a name, so each bullet will have a name type. And then we'll also have maybe grams of powder as a property. So that'll be an integer. And we'll generate a constructor to make it work. Now let's go back into the gun. So the gun is going to have some bullets to go with it. So I'm going to add a new property in the constructor and we'll call it a list of bullets. Now we're going to have the uh, this.bullets equal the parameter that was passed to us. And I'm going to switch the uh, parameter name to a capital bullet instead of a lowercase. So now since we have bullets in our gun, we're going to modify the attack with me method. So we're going to check to first of all see if there are any bullets in the gun. So bullets.count has to be greater than zero. If it's not greater than zero, then you can't fire the gun. So since we are firing a bullet, let's take the first bullet in the list. And we will say that the gun fires the bullet called, remember each bullet has its own name, and then uh, we use the name there. Then the uh, else statement says if there are no bullets in the gun, then we'll say the gun has no bullets, nothing happens. And then we also need to remove a bullet. So let's go back to the previous line and say bullets.remove at zero. So now let's create some new bullets to put into this list. The gun needs a list of bullets. And so we'll make a new list of type bullet. And we have to invent names for each of the bullets that we put into. That's the way that was designed. So the first guy is called Silver. He has 10 grams of powder. Then we'll have Lead, and we'll call another one Dead Aim, and uh, last one we'll call Hollow Point. Each of these will have its own level of powder. Now when you get toward the end here, you're going to say, this looks like a lot of code to get one hero. And it certainly is. And that's kind of the point that we're getting to is that our injections that are going on here are becoming kind of a pain. Now let's see if we can make this hero attack. So I'll say hero 4, and he is going to attack, and that will fire off one of the bullets. We're going to do this multiple times, so I'll copy and paste attack. All right, so now we're going to run the program and see what results we get. So for our interest, we're looking at G.I. Joe. It says he is shooting his gun. So he is shooting his first bullet called silver, then lead, then dead aim, then hollow point, 
and then the bullets run out and nothing happens. So I wanted to make sure that you saw the difference between how we have an embedded in dependency here in this first hero and then these other injected or dependent externals that we have for the weapons. And this gets to be pretty good until you get to a case when you start putting bullets in a gun and you have more and more things that literally are nested together until we have four parentheses deep at the end of our statement. So in the next part of the lesson, we're going to take a look at the uh, Unity dependency injection system that comes with Microsoft's uh, C Sharp. And so we're going to create some dependency injection using something called inversion of control. And that'll be coming up next.